LV here, and I just got back from my local card show in Portland, Oregon that I go to each month. As usual, I bring $1,000 cash and try to find the best possible deals I can. Uh, it's getting a little more difficult because, I, you know, this is the only card show I go to, so you start to see the same dealers, same tables, same cards, but it doesn't mean you still can't find good deals. It just means you got to dig a little deeper into the tables and look through boxes that you haven't already look through and you can still find some great deals. Plus some dealers bring new in inventory each month. Overall, I'm really happy with the deals I found. I ended up spending around $850 out of the thousand dollars. And as usual, I will go through what I paid at each table and then I'll shut off the camera and tell you which ones are gradable. I'm excited to see if some of these can be sent into PSA and maximize their value. Uh, I also want to discuss one quick thing. It's a little pet peeve I've noticed recently coming back to going to card shows. I didn't used to experience this at all, but now for the last four months when I started going back to the shows, I experienced it every time. So it, I, you know, you got to carry your cards, the cards you buy in something. So I pack around this old Jordan shoebox, perfect size to hold all the cards that I buy from each table. But every time I walk up to a dealer at a table, the first thing they ask is, are you selling any of those cards in the box? And the box is shut, but they still always ask that. But that's totally fine, totally fine question. And I always say, no, not selling at all. But then they continue to push it. They say, well, can I look at the cards anyway? And I don't want them to look at the cards. You know, it's, it's cards I just bought and I haven't even processed. I want to get home and look at them all. I, I don't want them mixed up or anything. Um, and I, but I want to be polite, so sometimes I'll let them, but sometimes I gently say, no, that's okay, you know, I just bought these, but some are still persistent and ask me a second time. It's, it's really crazy. I'd say half the dealers did that today. So I don't know, let me know if you guys experienced that same thing. For some reason it kind of bothers me, but in the end, it's not that big of a deal. All right, let's quickly go through these and see the deals that I bought. All right, let's start with this LeBron stack. And this is a table I really wanted to go back to. It had, I've been buying a lot of 90s inserts that have been gemming from him. I've been buying raw. So that's a table I'll always kind of go back to. And I saw he had this LeBron, the sticker price of 100. That seems really cheap to me. And if you know anything about this card, it is not, it's more of the factory set kind of gold collection. Uh, but this card is always off-centered. And, uh... It looks really clean and centered to me. Maybe a little off left to right, but it's nice. I can't wait to get it out of there and see if it's gradable. But look at it. it looks clean. Uh, here's $10 for the Lajuan Refractor Chrome. And I like it when dealers do this. The red designates what the cost per card. And in this case, the red equaled $5 per card. And we got the LeBron Marquee. The Eldon Campbell, a Darko Rookie Autofocus, and a Jermaine O'Neal and Jason Richardson numbered out of 500 Topps Chrome 2004 refractors. And I think the, the green was just two bucks, and that one was, I guess, just five. I think he threw that one in there. So I offered him $100 cash, and he took it. I think this totaled around 135 Uh Yeah, I think that's a steal. I really do. That was the first stack. The next stack, let's do another little bit bigger one. It's paid 270. I created a little stack here. You didn't have any price tags on them. Um, so sometimes that's a good thing. I was intrigued. And he added these up, all of these, and he added it up to a hundred and twenty. Uh, I was kind of around a hundred on these, um, but I think 120 was pretty fair. But I was also intrigued by this Jalen Hurts. You know, Eagles are back playing pretty well. He's got his receivers back. And I just loved the way this shined. Uh, these kind of metal cards are really cool raw, but they don't grade well. So I would just keep this uh, raw. It is numbered out of 79. So that's pretty cool. But look how beautiful this card is. He had 275 sticker, but... I asked what he would go, and he was kind of close to around 180. And uh, he said, if I bought these for 120, that he would give me this for 150. And I was like, wow, okay, yes, 
Uh, I think so. I paid 270 for this stack, and I'm very happy with that. You got a Manu Ginobili Autos, number to 99. I love this LaMarcus Aldridge being a Blazer fan, number to 25. This Amari Stoudemire I really like because of the numbering. It's a uh, three out of eight. Keontae George, just basic, but the Stroud looks centered up, so I went with that. And Sabonis, again, being a Blazer fan, number out of 10. So 270 on that stack. I'm really happy with that. And then we got an Aaron Judge. This is what a rookie year. It's a later rookie year, so I think it's 2017, but it's a kind of best cuts refractor. Just 15 bucks on this little stack. Posey, 2010 tops 206 rookie, and then an Aaron Judge. I haven't given up on them. I'm filming this on Saturday, right after the show. I'll probably post this video on Tuesday, but I haven't given up on the Yankees to potentially win this. And Aaron Judge has to get out of his slump sometime, so it'll be interesting to see. I think they're going to make it a series. Um, let's see. This one was just a basic purchase. It's I've always loved this card growing up, and I knew these gold signatures, just how hard they were to get, to pull. And this is the Jordan, of course, in his White Sox uni. Um, he had $80 on it. I didn't feel like negotiating much. I just said, hey, you take 60 cash. And he said, yeah. He said, yeah, right away. So, But I, before I made the offer, I looked at comps, and they were reasonable. I feel like eights were going for around 120 or something. And I know this is a six, but... You can obviously see why. It's got that crazy fish eye. But if you're like me, it's really clean, crisp card. You know, it's like pack fresh. It just has that printing defect. I don't mind cards that are really sharp, that look like pack pulled, that are graded lower. Because, that you know, that's how they came out of the factory. I, the cards I don't like necessarily are the cards you can tell with tons of corner wear, indents, Cards that you can really tell have been handled a lot. That's that's what I don't like. So it just goes along with kind of buying the card, not the grade. So I like it. I like it's sharp. I might crack it out. It'll look good in this little, you know, magnetic case. We'll see on that one. So I think I got a good deal on that. 60 bucks. And then we got... Put the stacks I've already done. This one I got from a really nice dealer. He had 100 on it. It's numbered at 75. I'm going to start to buy some Giannis and Curry and LeBron um, kind of lower numbered prisms. I think down the road they'll be have a little more value to them. And it is a PSA gem, so I don't need to grade it already. It's numbered at 75. I just asked him what he'd go, and he, went, he said 75. So uh, I'm okay with that. Paid 75 bucks for it, and he just threw in these they're replicas. I can just give them to my son. That was nice of him. All right, 75 on that stack, and we will do this stack. This stack was 100. There's some fun cards in here. I remember he just threw in that. I was looking at it, found it at the end. Michael Jordan Electric Court, and it is the Charlie Sheen version. I like that. Uh, we got a center stage Jordan 15. It looked like a potential 8, so I'm happy with that. And here's a Kobe card that you don't see very often. I, I kind of like that parallel design right here. I don't see it very often. Looks like maybe a little off-center left to right. It looked pretty clean. Um, he had a 40 sticker tag on I didn't even check comps because I just don't see this card very often. So hopefully <laughs> I got a good deal on that. Um, but then I always like the Shaquille O'Neal Scoring Kings. And here's a low number Devin Booker out of 25. And a Wemby Select Blue Prism. And a Puka. It is Lee, or Leaf Pro Set, so it's not going to suffer that much. But it is numbered at 5, so I like that. And they're back being healthy, so. Um, yeah, so that stack uh, looked like it totaled somewhere around 130, 100, 135 anyway. Uh, he took 100, so I'm very happy with that. Next up is another fun one. This one was 130 stack. We got Darius Slay, the cleats immaculate. Kind of a cool image. You got some Popeye eating spinach right there. I don't know. I just thought it was a cool card. Uh, number out of 23, 15 sticker on it. He had you know, DeAndre Hopkins. His cards are seeing a little boost now that he's on the Chiefs. And Anthony Richardson, he is struggling, but I haven't given up on him completely. I think he's just in a slump, but we'll see. Get a 25 sticker on that nine. It's already graded as a laser. 
I love this Den Derrick Henry. You know I like buying Derrick Henry stuff. I don't really care for the Arena Club grade, um, but it is. I bought it because it's five out of five sweet level green prism. Look at that. And I liked it. I think that's what put me over the top. If it was numbered one or five out of five, I was going to take it. But I do, I do not trust Arena Club grading at all. I mean, look at You can see the tip right there, the white. So this would be an, at least probably a nine PSA. But anyway, he went down. I offered 120 for these, and he said 140, and we met in the middle at 130. All right, this deck I spent $45 on. We'll start with a Larry Allen. Uh, rest in peace. He died pretty young. You don't see a ton of his autos, but when you do, it's usually these 1994 superior rookies, or maybe there was like a, a four sport or something, but uh still to to own a on card art auto of his i'm excited about and kevin why he's a hall of famer to get his rookie auto for three dollars or less is a steal and this gear will look really clean it looked like an eight or nine and those pinnacles are completely uh condition sensitive 93 pinnacles and then this was a beautiful card devonta smith he's back being healthy hurts thrown to him look at that cool looking patch and it's number nine out of ten he has a sticker tag of only ten bucks on it that just seems cheap to me and it is his rookie year right chronicle graphics 2021 anyway uh yeah sticker price was what around 60 about 65 and got him down 20 bucks so 45 bucks on that and then the last little bit was a fun dollar table Again, he designated, which was nice. The green tape is a dollar, and the yellow was three dollars. Let's go over. I love. I still love going to dollar boxes. It's just fun for me. So I pulled out thirty-five dollar cards. John Morant, epic. Some Devin Booker dominant silver. Some Giannis silver. Keep in mind, all these are a buck. I think it's a steal down the road. Jokic. Scoot Henderson, and I won't necessarily grade these right away. I'll just stick them in a box, and later in a couple years or wherever, if they're worth grading, I'll, I'll grade them. Uh, Ledecky, you got some LeBron, even LeBron base, I still think is a good deal. Uh, Caitlin Clark, I always like that image with the heart. Um, we got some Kelvin Cato, <laughs> I actually like watching him. Uh, Tyrese Maxey, Silver Prism, some Scoot, just basic. The Iron Sheik, it's not in great shape, but for a buck. I had to get it. These USA Prism Basketball sell pretty well. This is Curry for a buck. Juju Watkins is a big name coming up for female basketball. Kevin Garnett. This is the Silver USA for a buck. I do not know who AJ Hammer was, but it's celebrity worn memorabilia. Uh, I just pulled it up. I just picked it up. Why not? Gigi Jackson. Good one, Champions Red. Here's a Silver. Charles Barkley. Tyrese Maxey, Emergent Rookie, Brandon Miller, Rookie, Dominant, Silver, Zoran, Rookie, on card. Some more Durant, Eric Metcalf. I like that because they include an Atwater, too, on the back, and it'll look clean. The Atwater sells pretty well on 10. He's a Hall of Famer. Some Steph Curry, Spellbound, Chase, Honor Roll, Dwayne Robertson, Jersey. I just love the old school Patriots uni, so I picked that up. Irving Fryer, Funkadelic probably not worth a buck but I, why not i like the card durant some red wave i do not know how to say his name but i <laughs> went with the risk there for a buck sadiq bay some durant my house purple some woodson rookie flare 98 uh kylan hill don't know much about him but is a buck and then uh, this one pokemon was a buck um this is the three dollar card theo some good win we got a luca silver we got caitlin when she was younger it's got a cool card and color match jalen hurts fireworks keith hernandez i liked him when he was on seinfeld a lot um he wasn't on there a lot but number out of 50 it's the gold and then we got a lamar jackson prismatic i love the way prismatic look 
And this Andy Pettit, look how centered it is. This 93 Bowman, it's his rookie, but it's always off-centered. So I just went in and pulled the trigger at $3. Thunder Road, Curry. Anyway, I had one, two, three, about eight of these. And that equals, what, 24 bucks. He went 20 on it. And I had $35, $1, and he went 30 So this stack was 50 bucks. I'm happy with that. Now I'll shut off the camera and tell you which ones are gradable. Oh, yeah, also part of that $8.50 I spent were these awesome posters that you see in the background. So I grew up loving these kind of skyline posters. And, uh, you know, these are from like 1988. We got the Celtics team. You got Robert Parrish, Kevin McHale, Dennis Johnson, Danny Ainge. Uh, they were only five bucks each. So I was very happy when I grabbed those. I have a whole poster collection there in my garage somewhere, but... I would love to make a video on them because I have so many from the from the 90s and late 80s. There's such cool posters, designs, and artwork. Uh, but okay, all right, let's go through the see if they're gradable. All right, here they are in their stacks. This is ungradable, gradable, and urgent grade like usual. Urgent grade. This Kobe looked really good. Looked like a mint nine. Um, Booker looked like a ten. Hernandez looked like a ten. Possible ten on the Sabonis possible 10 on the LeBron. I think that's where I'm going to make some money. I'm going to put up what a PSA 10 sells for on that card, and you'll see how I got a pretty good deal. That Mari looked like a 10 for sure, and the Ginobili looked like at least a mint 9 or 10, and the Jordan looked like an 8 for the center stage. Uh, these ones, um, the Pettit looked like a possible 10. I might grade some of these down the road. <laughs> the Caitlin looked great, like a potential 10. Uh, some I won't grade because they just didn't pan out or whatever. But believe it or not, that Elton Campbell looked amazing. But all these you might see in future reveals eventually, depending on the PSA specials they have run each month. And the Atwater looked like a potential 10. That was a sneaky purchase. There you go on these. They look pretty good. Uh, I'd say overall about 60-40, 60% gradable, 40% ungradable. This Devonta Smith, I expect it to be not gradable. Uh, it's just got corner wear. Thick card wear, you know how it goes. Unfortunately, the cheater looked great from a distance, but look at that mark right there. That'll do ya. Do ya in. Off-center on the Moai, off-center on the Larry Allen. Thick card, corner wear, you know, acetate, scratches, you know how that goes. Little edge wear, corner wear. And this card is a great example of what not to do if you are a dealer, okay? So, I was all excited. Card looks like a gem 10 on the front. What do you see on the back? Oh, writing. 2017 for 8 bucks. RC... Oh, I've seen that somewhere before. Right here. There you go. Definitely don't write a sticker. It's just frustrating. See that? There you go. That's what happened. Um, And then another warning. I don't always like buying cards that are in these magnetic cases because some people don't know how to put them in right or they jostle around and they get pinched because they come off of where they should be. And that's exactly what happened with the, the Wemby front gem 10. Flip it over, look what happened to the bottom, pinched exactly where this magnetic was. See that? There and there, lines up there, lines up there. It's just so frustrating. So it makes it ungradable. That's okay. Um, and then we got the sleigh. Just had the back corner wear right there. See it? Thick card. And the hearse looked pretty good. But like I said, it's really hard to grade these metals. So I'm just going to keep it as is. It looks great raw. And all these just had little issues. Not a big deal on those. And, and then I can just go ahead and sell these as is. Already slabbed up. They look great. Okay, um, I also got one package in the mail. It's a quick one that I'm excited to show you guys. I'll do that real quick right now, too, before I leave. Okay, here's the package. I got it from Probstein. This is going to go a long way to help my gold 2003, 2003 
Topps Chrome Refractor Set. I noticed, I checked daily, but I noticed they had about 40 golds ending. And I won about 10 of them. So I'm stoked on that one. We got some Steve Francis. Uh, paid 66 each on these. I'm really excited. I just need these to grade at least mint nines, I'm hoping. So again, another 66. The Gary Payton, I think I got a steal on. I got it for $79. The Corey Maggette was about $46. I already own this one in a 10, but at $46, I'm a buyer. Eddie Jones was pretty cheap too. I think it was like $48, maybe $45 at a 99. Amari Stoudemire was around 81. The Tai Chan was 45. The Steve Francis, I think I got one of them for about 59. So we'll see that one's the 59 one. Jason Richardson was $69. The other Amari was like $86. And the Keith McCleod was only 40. So I am really excited to see which ones are gradable. Maybe I'll show you real quick which ones are gradable. All right, overall, I think I did okay. Uh, I wasn't expecting these to be gems at all, but I think the Amaris are the ones that have possible gem chances. Very clean, not one surface scratch. They look really clean. So hopefully one of those will gem. And all of these look like eights are better, which is all I'm hoping for. That's great. I'm building the set, hopefully eights are better. So yeah, most of these look like nines. I'm very happy with that. And there's only two that were just ungradable completely. This this Steve Francis was pretty banged up. I was not happy with that. You see, wow, look at that indent. Look at all, wow, look at all these indents. So that one's a dud. And the Tai Chan, that's normal, that little dimple. But what's not normal is the back ding corner right there. See that? Uh, yeah, there you go. I hope you enjoy this little card show pickup video. I'll be back with normal reveals. And I, as always, I really pre appreciate everyone supporting my content and watching and commenting. And it, it means a lot. All right. Hope everyone has a good day.